Hey gamers, I got a big one for you today. Today we're gonna to look at Russian railroads, the expansion German railroads, the other expansion American railroads, and of course, the mini expansion. Let's check them out. for setup, let me show you what you're going to be getting. You're going to be getting your own player board here. You're going to be getting these little tracks here, these black tracks. You're going to put one on each one of the tracks at the number one spot here. You're also going to start with a number one train, which is a little rinky-dinky train. You're going to put it right here. You can put additional trains on the edges here, but I'll get to that later. You're going to take one of your purple industry markers and put it here. Every player will have an additional marker that they can maybe use in the game. They're going to start off with seven of these little workers here. They're also going to have two to the side because those they can unlock later on in the game. Now in addition to this extra uh, industry marker they have, they'll have all the other uh, train tracks that they could be unlocking in the game. Uh, grays, browns, tans, and then the white. Uh, of course, each player is going to start off with one little rupel, and they're also going to get these little question mark tokens, which are basically special abilities I'll talk about in just a minute, and they're going to get, uh, these are associated with some of these special tabs here, but these are little secret uh, powers or special abilities that every player, every player has the same tokens in their, hand, in their uh, hand, and they can play these out when they cross these certain areas on their player track. The game, I should mention, comes with an easy uh, scoring overview because this is probably the most confusing part in the game is how to score your player board. But each of these come with this handy dandy uh, little player aid to really help you out when scoring. Now moving up here on the main board, you're gonna see, you're gonna shuffle some of these engineer uh, tokens here, some A's and B's, and put seven of them on the track here, starting with A's and then ending with B's. One's gonna go here, two are gonna go flipped up because they're gonna be a little worker uh, space places for this round, and you're gonna lay them here. You're gonna have your two extra meeples here for any player to get. You're gonna have your starting lineup on who's going first, second, third, and fourth. You're also gonna have cards associated to that to give out to each player because after they pass, they could get certain rewards. First player gets nothing, but the second player gets two victory points, third player gets three victory points, and of course fourth player gets four victory points every round they stay in those areas. So even though going first is a great advantage, going second, third, and fourth will also garner you some victory points. Now underneath the player order track, you'll see this little uh, token here. You'll put this down, you'll reveal this on the last round. This is an extra worker space moment, but only on the last round of the game. And then of course you'll have all your little starting meeples here on the score track. You're also going to have uh, all your trains labeled from two to nine. Remember everyone started with a one, and if there are any ones left over in the game, like in a three player game there'd be a one, you'd probably put the one here. But you'll put them in that order, and then you'll have these special cards, which I'll get to in a moment, and then your in game cards on top of that. Also in addition, each player, starting with the fourth player and going backwards, are going to choose one of these special one-time bonuses that they'll get at the beginning of the game. It can be a times two token, which I'll talk about in a minute. They can move their black track, any of them, up one. They can move their industry marker up one, or they can just grab an extra ruple. So zooming in a little bit more on the board, let me show you some of the actions you can take. In player order, everyone's gonna be placing their little worker meeples around this board. And some of the actions that you can see here are moving trains on your board. If I was to place one worker here, I could move my black train twice. If I was to place two workers here, I could move my black train three times. And of course, the same goes for any colored train as you see down below. Right here, if I played a worker and one ruple, then I could move any color train once or twice and then here is an all space which means as many players can go here as they want to and there, there's you can't get blocked out of this and if you put one if you put one worker there you get to move your black or your silver train one space 
So moving back down to the player board, let me show you what I mean by that. If I had placed in that first worker area where I can move a black train twice, I can move the same train one, two spaces, or instead move this one one and this one one. So you can break up that movement or make it for just one train, whatever you think is best. Now, when moving your trains, you're gonna be unlocking certain special abilities on your player board. So for instance, if you see this, when the black track goes here, you're gonna unlock your three little gray tracks that you can now add to the side of your board here and they can come out next. And as you see later on, if he makes it down to here, he would unlock the brown tracks, just like that. And then <laughs> later on down here, the tan tracks. And there's two tans here, as you see on the player board says two, because tan tracks can only go on the first and second track, not on the bottom track. And then eventually, if he made it all the way down to the bottom of this track, he would score 10 victory points, in addition, unlocking his one white track, which he can move two spaces on the board, on the, on, only on the top track. And so these will get you different points in the game. Uh, I'll get to that when we go to game scoring, but if you look here, uh, black tracks are worth zero points, gray's worth one, brown's worth two, uh, tan's worth four, and the white one is worth seven. So there can be some big uh, points being scored here on those train tracks. Now in addition to that, you can see there are certain areas on the board where you can unlock your other players. So for instance, if the black track ever gets here, you can unlock and get an additional worker. If the brown tra track gets here, so let's say gray moved up the board here and brown moved up to here. If they moved up to here, they could also get a worker. But you see there's a plus train here. Now I'm going to get to what that means in just a moment. So looking at some of the actions you could also do up here is you can put a worker here and either get a train token or an industry token. Now when you do that, you're going to grab the one that's on the farthest left of the board. So for instance, I look here, I'd have to grab the two. And so I grab the two. Now I have a choice. I can use this as a train or flip it around and use it as an industry marker. And if you see here, you can do the same action uh, by placing two people there. So that means if this one's blocked out, if you still want one of those, you can go here and get and make it either or. Or you can place three workers here and get two. Make one a train and one an industry marker if you want the best of both worlds. So going back to our player board, what does this mean? Well, using a train here, if I wanted to, I could put it here and that would have a point system of three, a push of three. I have three trains, so that means it would score any one of these first three tracks. Anything past that would not score. So for instance, I told you grays are worth one point. Well, anything, and by the way, in the scorecard here will tell you this, uh, you need to pretend there is a ghost train behind that one. So for instance, if black was right here, that would be a black, that would be a black, that would be a black. Gray is here, this would be a gray. And then it changed to brown, that means these three are browns. So in essence, I should get one point for that gray, a point here for gray, and then two points for every brown. However, since my power of my engine is only three, I can only count the first three tracks here, three spaces on this track. So the two grays would not count. Now, if I instead had a level five, then that would count all the way up to six spaces on my track, depending on the power of your train. Now remember, you can only have two trains here at the top here. You can replace this one, like later on, let's say I got a level six. I could replace this, bump it, and then put this one either here or here. And only one train each can go here. And if all these were filled, let's say, and then I brought in another one, let's say I had a number seven train, well I would replace it to bump the four one here. Well where's the four one go? Well I can bump that one to replace the number one here. Well where's the number one go? Well the number one would just go back up on top into the pile for people to get. You can flip it over into its industry marker. Uh, but trains can, uh, like I said, uh, when you go to scoring points, the power of your train allows you to count up to that many numbers on the track to score. So for instance, let me go to this bottom one here. As you see, if I have my black track here, it says plus train. That means my train has to have a power of four to count for four extra victory points every round. And of course this one is a push seven, so phew, I can count up points all the way up to here. Even though I don't need, you don't see the plus train there, the black track just has to make it there and I'd unlock the guy. But here I need a power of eight 
and I could get 10 victory points every round. And of course, if the black train, the black track gets to any of these ends, you're going to score 10 points immediately. Now, the other thing you could do is you could, instead of using it as a train, you could flip it over and use it as an industry marker, and you would just set it right down here. And as you can see, you can have it to five upgrades on your board. Now, industry moves are on the board up here. Uh, you can choose any one number of your workers here to move it on the track one space or put two people there for two spaces or put two people here to move your industry marker one space and a black track one space. So what does that mean? Well, moving your industry marker is another way to make points. Every time you move it down, you see it has these number stars. So let's say I ended my turn here. Well, at the, when I'm adding up all my points, I would also add up wherever my industry marker is. So that'd be three victory points. Now, later on, if I was to move it two more spaces, I'd move it right down there and I get, what's this, a free industry move. So I can move it straight back up here and now I'm scoring 10 points every round. Now, if I wanted to move again, I would have to have an upgrade here. I could not skip from 10 to 15. You have to have an upgrade here to move or the industry marker may not move. Again, this is another way to get special bonuses in the game. Plus, uh, these could be any types. So like this is different here. I can move two of any train or maybe if I use this four, I would get once I got there, I would get two of those times two tokens, which I'll talk about in a minute. But anyway, moving up the industry track can also give you a lot of points. Now, looking at the last three spaces here, uh, you can put a person here and it gives you a times two marker. These little times two markers here, you can place them on the top of your top track here, and they will double the points for that train track. So for instance, again, let me just kind of show you how the score tracking would go with this if we were scoring this round. Now I have a train that has a power of six. So I can count up to six spaces here. So black is all here. Black's worth zero points, so I get no points for that. Here, I would get one point because that's gray. I'd get one point here, so that's two points. Now brown is here, so everything here would be brown. So that's, that's two, he'd be four, six, eight. But, because it's a times two, I would get a bonus two points, because that two times two would be four. So that space, instead of being two victory points, would equal four victory points. So as you can see, the higher, like if I had a teal there, instead of being worth four victory points, it'd be worth eight. So you can see where it'd be very beneficial to load up your entire track here with some times two markers, because you can make some pretty big points, especially if you have some of your more expensive trains coming through. Now the other space here is where you can get two coins here. Uh, when you get two ruples, ruples uh, you can use to either purchase engineers, which I'll talk about in a minute. If you put someone here, you could pay your uh, ruple and buy that engineer, but you could also use a ruple as a worker. So let's say that I wanted to go to this space, but I only had one worker left over. What I do is I take one of my ruples, put it here, and put him on top of it. That would count as two workers there, and I could take that action. So that's what ruples can do for you. Now, in addition to that, you can place one person here and grab these two teal workers, so basically get a two for one if you, you don't have any more coin you still want to take a two action. Now, this counts as your one action, so the next round you may use both the teal workers, and those are very popular in our games there. Now, I should also say uh, the engineers are something else you can go on, like I said, you can go here, pay a coin, and get your little engineer. These little engineers count as little uh, personal workspaces you can have. You'd flip it over, and now every time I place my own worker here, no one else may play, play uh, on this card but me. And when I play here, then I get a times two marker and three victory points. Now, these engineers act as an in-game uh, counter for the game. So at the end of the next round, I would shift this one down and by the way, right now, uh, any workers could play on these two. Uh, this one says, hey, you can move any colored uh, train one space and get three points. This one says, hey, move a gray train one space and get five victory points. But at the end of the round, this one's going to go up for sale next. This one's going to slide over. This one's going to flip over. And these are going to all shift down. 
Now when this one gets sold, that is the end of the game. So kind of works as a uh, round tracker there as well. But also I should mention that at the end of the game, whoever has the most engineers is going to get 40 victory points. Whoever has second will get 20 and third and fourth get zero. Now going back to our player board, if you'll see here, there are these little spots here that you can unlock these secret abilities or special abilities that I told you about earlier. And if your train goes there and it does get to unlock one of those abilities, remember you have to have, and these symbols here, I have to have a plus train here, so if I had my six here and black got here and then later here, I could unlock some of my secret abilities. What do these do? These do several different things for you. Uh, this one gives you a second industry marker on your track. So once you score each one of these on the track, you can't score them again. However, if you have your second uh, industry marker, which was where I just lost it. Anyway, it had a two by it. Oh, here it is. If you had your second industry marker here, then you could put one here on the zero and start scoring all of them again and score additional victory points. So if I had a guy here and one here, I'd get, let's say I had him here, that'd be 15 and that'd be five. That'd be 20 points I'd get per game. Uh, per round. Uh, I can go here and pick this one instead and whatever whatever super special ability you pick you put it here and this one unlocks this little track here that adds value to your browns, tans, and white. You just put it over your player scorecard and now those are worth even more points. Or maybe you want to pick this one here that gives you three times two tiles that you can just lay out on your track and start scoring lots of victory points. Maybe you just want to move your industry up five spaces or move any trains up four spaces. Uh, these are really self-explanatory. You can also find them in the rules. You can get uh, four ruples or you can get this little token. Every player comes with this little token here that they can put right here. There's a little outline for it. Once you put, put it there and a silver gets there, and remember they have to have the power of a train there, so it has to have at least a power of five. So again, let me move my train here. Let's say I have my train a power of six right there. And so when I do that, uh, and I have my silver there, then I'm going to get 20 points every round. So that's really nice. Uh, and then the last one is really neat. It's kind of, you get to take one of the question marks cards and one of the end game cards. Let me show you what I'm talking about. At the top of this board, you saw I laid out some of these special cards here. Now, uh, the special cards I'll go through very briefly here. This one is basically just a nine train. Gives you a nine train. You can skip the line. Instead of going to the lowest one, which you have to pick from, you can go ahead and purchase a nine train, number nine power train, which is a really powerful train to have, and it can really help you in scoring some points. Or you can pick this guy here, who not only gives you a Rupal when you pick him, but he's also an engineer that when you flip over, he's your own personal workspace where you put a player there and you move any color train to spaces. Or you can pick this guy here, who uh, whenever he is on a space where you get to move a black train track, it is always a plus one. So for instance, on the board uh, here, if I was to place him here, instead of moving two, he would move actually three spaces on that black track, so he's a plus one. Uh, these other two are very simple. Uh, this one basically gives you uh, one times two, one industry move and one black track move, and then another one of your choice. And this one here gives you one industry, plus you get to move your industry marker up two more spaces. And then here are the end game points. Now, I'm not gonna go through all the end game points here, but the rule book will tell you what each one does. And basically, you'll just shift through the entire deck. You can look through the entire deck and pick the one that you think will best benefit you in the game. Uh, and these will be scored at the end of the game. So, how are you gonna be doing this? You're gonna be scoring every round. Again, they give you that scoring player aid to help you out if you're needing to know how to score. And it is very simple on telling you exactly what you should be looking for. Uh, after you score every round, you'll keep going again. I should also mention, there's another space I skipped here, I just noticed it. Uh, the first and second player space. If you're tired of, let's say, green player, was fourth place, and man, he really wants to be first player. Well, you can take one of your players and put them here. And then on the next round, you will be the first player, and if no one else played on second player, you'd move them all down that way. Now, in addition to shifting up to get the first player, at the end of the round, you can pick him up and then play him somewhere else. 
So instead of just using a worker to get first place, you can also play him again on the board, but that's after everyone else has played. So there's a risk there, but it is kind of neat that they gave you something more to do than just claiming first. Now, at the, on the last round, like I said, you'd have to flip this over. This just provides an extra worker space because getting first or second on the last round does not mean anything. So this one says, hey, if you put two workers here, you can move your industry markers up three spaces and you just put it there to kind of take over that first and second player spot. Now, again, like I said, at the end of the turn, at the last round, you'd add up all your final points, any in-game scoring, and whoever has the most points wins. Okay, the next one I want to show you is the German Railroads expansion. It comes with a new track here, as you can see. There's two short tracks and a track that splits off into two different directions. So every game you have is probably going to be different. You're going to have your three black uh, tracks there starting there. You're going to have your number one engine right here. And of course, this is the one that can support two and the other ones support one each. Uh, each player, there's going to be a starting token here that someone can start with, a starting player thing. And this is for coal. Uh, coal is one of the main resources in the expansion. In fact, you get an extra little special ability token that is gives you four extra coal. Uh, and all these are the uh, little coal tokens that come in the game. And coal is the new resource. I should also mention this comes with a solar player solo player mode, which I haven't played with. Um, but anyway, as you can see, there are three different trash you can go down here. Looks a little bit different than before. Uh, you're going to have only one extra thing new on this aisle, and that's going to be this token here. You're going to place it over the compass here. And they have something for two players as well. But here they have uh, three extra spaces you can have in this game. And let me just go over these spaces. First off, you place a worker there, obviously you get one coal token. If you place a uh, worker there with a coin, you get to pick a tile and get a coal token. What are tiles? These are tiles. You get to pick one of these and put them with you, and from then on, whenever you pay two coal, you will get whatever the reward is. And uh, the uh, instructions will tell you what rewards or what the emblems mean, but some of them are self-explanatory. So anyway, that's what you can get on that one. And then on the third one, if you pay two coal, you'll get a plus one token. Now, any of these can be flipped over for a plus one. And what that means is a plus one added on to any one of your trains. And you can only have one of these per train. So for instance, if I wanted to waste it and throw on this number one train, it's a plus one now. That means it is a power of two. So those are neat little things if you want to use. And those are the three extra actions that you have on your turn. Now another thing I should mention is when you get to these certain areas out here, you see there's little there's blanks here and there's little outlines here, you're going to get to pick from some of these tracks. And you're going to lay these tracks over on the sides of the board here or wherever you can and when a player gets there they're going to pick through and it says just lay them all out but that would take up so much board space. So you put them in stacks and you can choose, the player can choose from them and as you see, they're front and back. Uh, so they're different kind of. And you can choose from any one of these that you want to play on your player board. Now, uh, this can lead to some serious, serious analysis paralysis by letting someone choose through all these tiles. So one of the things I've seen done is people put out less of these. What we do is we put them in a black bag and have them randomly grab one. And that's the one that they're going to place over their area and use. Uh, but if you want to, you can take them through here and have them pick one, but that could take forever. And of course, there's sizes for this and this. Now, one of the emblems that you'll see on these tracks is this little repeat button. If you have those, you may pick up certain tokens, and they're also here, pick through one of these, or in this case, two of them, to place in those areas. Now, what these are, these are like every, a bonus that you'll get on every turn. So for instance, could be get an extra coin, move any train of your choice, move the industry marker, another, you know, basically the same, move two different types of trains. So you get to pick one or two of these to put on your board, and every turn, when it's your turn, if you've met the qualifications, you can flip them over and get the reward. And then after it's your turn, you'll flip them back over and next turn get them again. So these are ongoing rewards you can get that can really be powerful in the game. Now the game does come with extra engineers who are kind of geared to this level, like giving you coal and stuff. So it does come with extra engineers that you would shuffle in to the deck when playing the German expansion. Also, it has two extra special ability cards. This one lets you grab this token when placed over your board can increase the value of all of them. If you remember in the first 
base game, it only had these three. This one also includes silver as an upgrade. So again, looking down at your player board, you would just lay this over here and have a new scoring track. Or there's a second one here that you can take, which basically gives you this token and two coal. And what you do when you get to this uh, spot on your industry marker here, you can pay one, two, or three coal and move two times uh, twice on the black track. Now, if you don't spend any coal, you're still moving twice when you hit this spot. But you have a chance to move eight tracks with the black track marker just by, just it depends on how much coal you're gonna be dumping into it, one, two, or three. So you're gonna move two, four, six, or eight times when you hit this. That's incredible. You can basically rocket through this thing, or rocket up here, or rocket up there. Wow, what a nice little extra special ability you can have. And that's all what comes in the German expansion. The next expansion is the American Railroads expansion. In this expansion, you would not use your special marker with the secondary industry token because you are gonna start with two industry tokens. Whoa, look at that. So you got two tracks. You'll be hitting on the special powers twice and with two different endings here as well. Uh, so that's really cool because America's all about industry. Uh, of course, you see we have different tra uh, train tracks, very similar to the first one in, in a way, but there is some extra stuff they put on here. First, your first train track here. You can do some doubling points here. And as you can see, you can do some times two here and here as well. So the times two tokens, there's a lot more spaces for them. Uh, you also see there are some boulders here, boulder tokens you'd put over here and right here. And what you have to do to get rid of those boulder tokens is move a silver and a brown car over these spots where the dynamite emblems are. Once one of them goes over there, you can remove either or, and then when the next one goes through, when brown goes through, you can move the other one. Every time you blow up one of these boulders, you're gonna get 10 victory points, which is another little thing because they're maybe chiseling into the mountain there. Uh, you're also going to have two additional uh, special abilities here that I'll go into in just a moment. But uh, one of the things you see here, and this is the big thing about the game, is the stock market that you have here. And of course, each player's color is represented in the stock market. And as you hit any one of these little stock market emblems and you meet the qualifications, you can move up the stock market. So what would happen is uh, if I had my silver come through here and a train was reaching it, I could go up on the stock market. So I'd move my green token up and up one. Now for doing that, I get to pick one of these special bonuses that I want to have. So maybe I want a coin, maybe five victory points, maybe move a black track, maybe move two different kind of tracks, maybe move an industry market marker, or maybe just move any kind of train. So I do that, and then I take that advantage. Well, as you see up on this uh, scale here, you can keep going through this and keep raising up, and if you're the first one there, any other player who comes behind me, they'll have to take that advantage. But the first player there gets to pick what advantage they want as they go up this track. So what they're going to be doing is they're going to be shooting up this track, uh, trying to get these stock markers. Now there are three of them, three emblems here, where you need specific cars and you need to pay a ducat. So you make sure you do that. When you've done that, you can cash in one of these little check mark things. They give three to each player to let them remember how many more movements on the stock market they have. Now there's only five stock mar market movements on this player track here. How do you get to the tippy top and get that last one? Well, that is, of course, one of your special abilities. When you do this, you can cash this in, you can move up again one more. But whenever you move to the top, if ever you get to the top, and let's say I put all the things here, not only do you get that special one, but you'll also get 20 points at the end of the game for being the first one to get there. Now, if you didn't get there, if no one got up there, then it'd just be whoever was the highest. And if it was a tie for the highest, it's whoever's to the left, because that was the player who got to that level first. So first place would get uh, 20, second place would get 10 at the end of the game. But if you were to make it all the way to the top, not only are you guaranteed those 20 points, but you'll get this, uh, you'll get this uh, bonus plus all the other bonuses that came before it. Now what this token does is when you move onto a track and you shift up, you also get all the bonuses that came before it. So maybe I didn't get up that high, maybe I just went up to this level, and I did it by using my little special bonus. So I get this, 
plus five victory points, plus move any train on any track. So that's kind of how the stock market works. Now the other one they gave you is the golden spike. Oh, this is really cool. So when you make it to the end, and by the way, your train can't move if there's a boulder here, neither can your industry marker move here if there's a boulder there. So say I blew those up. Now if your train goes here and ends there, you're gonna get 10 victory points each. However, if you want more money, uh, you can go and get the, gold, the uh, golden spike uh, special ability. When you unlock that, you have a golden spike you can place here and get an additional 25 points for every finished one. So this is an additional 50 points just for playing it there. That is huge and thematic uh, because of the golden spike and how America was. One other thing I almost forgot to mention in this American Railroads expansion is these three tokens here. Now, you put these in between the trains, between trains four and five, six and seven, and eight and nine. Uh, the last player to pick up the last four, six, or eight train would actually get this token. Now what they would do, this is a Steelworks card, they can flip it over and use it as one of the industry markers, which is just a one movement on a black track, which doesn't seem that big, but also when you get it, you get an additional to your train and you get to go first in the next round. And so that's what these Steelwork tokens are. And so uh, again, you would count your points like regular, as you see at the end of this, uh, one of the industry tracks you would get to go up again, so that could be your sixth movement as well if you didn't want to use this special token here. And that is the American Railroads expansion. Now next up is the mini expansion that you can get on Board Game Geek. Uh, basically this expansion comes with four extra engineers you can put in the game and these wild card special abilities. When you choose one of these wild card special abilities, you can get one of these five extra powers that come in the game. Now, this one here lets you move your industry track two times. This next token lets you move your industry track three times and your black trains uh, three times. This other one lets you pick any engineer token that is not in play in the box and go ahead and put it in your personal player board. So really powerful there. Now, this little token will let you pick up this little extra train token. This is not count as a train, but it can be put behind one of your other trains. And right before scoring each round, you can move either one train of any color two spaces or two different trains of any color one space each. So that's a really neat little promo there. And, and then the last one here lets you take this industry card, which of course allows you to have two more special abilities in the game. So that is really super powerful there. Uh, finally, there is another promo. It's not included in this packet here. It's just separate. And basically, it's just this one engineer, and he will let you uh, move three different trains on three separate tracks when you play on him. Now, you can find this promo online uh, on eBay, you know, on, uh, through various places. Final thoughts. What do I think about the game? Wow. Wow. <laughs> uh, folks, I've been looking for a railroad game forever. Uh, I have played a lot of railroad games. Some that people say, these are great. And I play it and I go, because ah, it's all the same. It's like, try to build a track. Oh, but if someone else builds that track before you, you're screwed. So try to do another, uh, come up with another strategy and try to build this track. Oh, you can't build that track either. So maybe you build one track and maybe hopefully that'll be enough points. And that seems like every railroad game is like that. And I'd seen this cover, and the cover turned me off. I was like, oh, this probably looks like a boring game. And then when I said, well, I really want a railroad game. Let me look at every railroad game. When I saw this, I went, what is this? And uh, worker placement, of course, one of my favorite mechanisms. I was like, I got to try it. This game is amazing. It is amazing. First off, you can't get blocked out. Uh, you yourself are responsible for moving across all three of those tracks. And there are so many paths to victory, I love that. You can win off just, you don't even have to use industry. Uh, the first time I won, I just went straight industry, where everyone else went on railroad, and thankfully I won. Um, the, the thing that uh, gets me is that second and third and fourth player, they get extra victory points every round. So it actually behooves you a little bit not to be first. But of course, sometimes you're like, man, that spot keeps getting taken up. I am sick and tired of being last. So now I'm going to go first. And when you put your player there, you get to play again at the end of the round. I love that. I love that. So many smart ideas in this game. Now, it's out of print. Uh, but it's not that expensive to get. So this is a fantastic one. Honestly, one of the best games I've played this year. This is, 
this is probably a top 20 game for me. Um, I, I, I can't wait to see when my when I do my top 100 where this will be. But right now, ooh, it is riding up high because it is good. Now, the expansion, German Railroads. Great. Almost, probably even better. Uh, because the addition of coal and that you can do a billion more things to power up. Like those, those replayable uh, things you can turn around. Uh, little power-ups you get every round. Uh, coal to keep moving trains. To keep t changing in for other things. Oh man, you're just zooming down track. You can do anything on German railroads. Sadly, this expansion is also out of print. And this one costs a buku amount of money, ridiculous amount of money. I really hope Russian Railroads comes to get a reprint and they reprint this as well because this is a nice one. But unfortunately, this is the very this is a very expensive one and you may not be able to get it. Now, one that still is available as of this video is American Railroads. And you can go on the BGG store and you can actually purchase this for I think like 20 bucks, 22 bucks. And it's just, you know, this in a packet that comes with all the uh, the player boards and the expansion stuff here. I put the bag in there. But to be honest, don't let this one fool you. This is actually a really good one too. I love it because out of all of them, this one seems the most themed because you get your victory points by getting your trains, moving your trains. There's plenty of industry going on because it's America, but you got it's a race to get your trains built, just like it was in the Old West. Uh, that golden spike is a really cool idea, but the way you get points, the way you move on your board is to keep building and keep pushing trains. The focus really is focus on those trains. Don't focus on industry. Industry, you'll, there's plenty of stuff to do in industry, but you got to focus on this uh, the trains. I love that. I love it. You have to blow up the boulders. It can be very frustrating, especially for people who are playing the first, you know, the Russian railroads and you play German railroads. This changes up the game completely. It changes up the game completely. Uh, the stock market, pretty hard to move up on the stock market. But if you do, you're going to get some rewards. So the stock market the, it is a nice little addition. And like I said, it kind of turns the game on its ear in a little way because you got to change up your whole strategy. I love that about the game. Now, the little mini expansion that you can also get uh, through the BGG store. I, I can't remember how much. It's pretty cheap. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Why not? Um, it's extra stuff. I do like some of the extra. Those are powerful, powerful abilities. So I would get that one. And that one little conductor I showed you, uh, yeah, you can get him too if you can track him down on eBay. He's relatively cheap. I think he's under 10 bucks. Uh, anyway, overall, uh, this game is just Phenomenal, phenomenal. I love worker placement, and I've been dying for a train game, and this scratches both of those itches, and I love it for it. I love it for it. So this game comes highly recommended. If all you can get is the base game, that's fine, and then get American Railroads, which basically changes everything up. I mean, sure, like I said, you, you really would want German Railroads too, because that's really some nice stuff. But uh, Russian and American railroads would probably be good enough if you're you know, a little bit more conservative on buying. Uh, and hopefully they all come back into print. Who knows? All right, gamers, that's all the time I have for now. Until next time, game on.